Okay, I'm gonna do this again. Now, uh, you're not gonna know until now, I'm gonna tell you. I blabbed on for like 18 minutes, didn't get anything started. Uh, um, I'm gonna do like a setup and a couple rounds of Tonto Cori so you guys can see how it plays and hopefully you, you can see how, why a lot of people find this to be a, uh, a much better game than the old classic Dominion. Now, if, if you're, you know, I, I know people who really love that game and it's a good game, but it's just one of those that at the time it was the only uh, game that used deck building as its primary mechanic. It's the only one that out there, and so it got played to death, I think. Um, it doesn't matter how many expansions it, they come up with, it's all part of the same game. There's nothing really new and fresh and different, and I like variety. I like, I mean, I, I could have had Dominion with two expansions, and then, you know, two of my favorite expansions, and then that's it. But they keep on putting out more stuff, and it's really not that innovative. It's just like, do something slightly a little different each thing and I'm um, I'm ready to move on. I have a friend with Dominion. I I know another there's another guy in my gaming group has every expansion and I will play it reluctantly because like I said it's, it is a good game but there are so many other games I would much rather play. So if we have some some new people to our gaming group then yeah, well, we can pull it out and we can play it. But other than that, we're doing something else. So <clears throat> I'm actually going to pause the, the video real quick and um, pull out all the cards needed. What I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go and I'm just going to grab these suggested cards that they suggest for your first game. And then we have the diagram of the setup here and I'm actually going to lay it out like this so it fits all on the on the nice playmat here. And then I'll go over a little bit of the details like the anatomy of a card and what each of those um right here the, the actions you can take and the keywords all right so we'll pause it and when i come back um we'll have the game all set up okay so i pulled out all the cards there's a lot of cards despite not pulling all those as you can see i still have half the box left in here so We'll set that aside. Hopefully they won't collapse in the box by themselves. So what I pulled out are, let's see, we have 10 general maids, 3 levels of love. So love is the currency of this game. Um, each card, the anatomy of a card, right here, you can see card name title, the cost, or their employment cost, how much it costs to uh, hire them from the board, the victory point value if they have one, made category, some are general maids, some are private maids, some have some special occupation, uh, made ability, there's some small, some tiny, tiny print that tells you sometimes what the maid can do, special ability, and then you have the four things and then they're highlighted here employments or how many cards you may purchase or hire from the board um, servings I call them tasks that that sounds how many times they can serve you or how many tasks you can take and each of these right here and draw drawing cards so each of these um, in this corner this corner and this corner are actions to be taken or servings and you'll need additional tasks or actions to to perform on those and then down here is just the value if it gives you any monetary value it'll be listed in the lower left as love which again is the currency of this game so setting up the board as uh, depicted in the diagram I have to reiterate that I am learning this again. The, part of what I blabbed about in the video before was um, that I had the I had played the game a couple times and learned with friends 
long time ago, but I mostly played on my iPad before I accidentally broke it. And so, you know, when you play these board games, and it was it was a uh, a true translation of the game, but when you, we play these board games on uh, the app, the app takes care of like if I do something I'm not supposed to do. I mean, it won't let me make mistakes, so I didn't have to worry about those. Scoring was a breeze because the app took care of it, and um, the the amount of tasks I had available was counted, you know. So all this other stuff is part of the game. It's part of the challenge. You kind of have to remember what you're doing if you mess up and there's no one to no there's no computer to make sure you've taken all your actions that make sure you have spent all your love you know whatever so on the left if we start we'll have the private maids which are the fancy maids these guys as you can see their costs are are a bit higher like you have these guys for example, the cost is two. Um, they're worth one victory point at the end of the game. And then you can do these things. Uh, chambermaid. What is that? Minus one action, looks like. Or cost an action. Come on, focus. I'll read it. So, oh, there's a bonus. So for each set of two or three Crescent Sisters you have as chambermaids, you get bonus victory points. Each set of two different sisters equals three victory points. Each set of all three sisters is seven victory points. So they're in combination with their sisters, they have uh, bonus victory points. Now these private maids give you special abilities, like they're really powerful abilities. And to score in this game, you send... Okay, so it's, it's going to sound a little inappropriate. <laughs> You can send the, the maids to your chambers to score your victory points. So, um, not all of these private maids give you victory points. As you saw, like this, this one gives you one. You get two here. Um, but they have varying costs. That one gets two. This is negative four. But I guarantee you the ability that she gives you is super awesome. They cause you, and this was negative three, which is a uh, twist on, well, not a twist. They're like, these are sisters. So it looks like they have a Zaymot and Tomax thing going on, sort of mirror images of themselves. So the one that's negative four victory points, you may discard all but one card from your hand if you do send two illnesses from the town onto one maid in any private quarters of your choice. So what this does is the gimmick of this game is you can play illnesses or bad habits and illnesses clutter up your deck they're worth zero victory points and they just sort of get in the way oh no they don't clutter up your deck what they do is they prevent uh certain maids from scoring and you can play them on different maids in the chambers and thus nullifying them so you would have to Heal them somehow. Well, it's 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 uh, described in the card how you can do that, and then you can play negative points on your opponents it's in the form of bad habits. So, if you have four or more bad habits in your private quarters, each is worth two minus two victory points. So you don't want to have to have too many bad habits played on you. So. Private maids, you're gonna have. They're gonna be face down, and then two will be face up. Two to choose from. It looks like. So we'll shuffle these up. Put them here, and then we'll reveal two. Oh, that one came up right away. Uh, who shuffled this deck? Let's do that again. There we go. There we go. That one still came out. So, let's see. Let's turn this a little bit so we can get the whole thing. Um, 
Okay, so now we need some general maids. Their order does not matter, but we'll put the scissors together just for simplicity's sake. There's three of them. I know these look like pretty tall stacks, but I've sleeved these cards, so... Um, those of you who know, I sleeve everything. If they're cards, I sleeve them. There's a whole story behind them, but I'm slowly... Uh, people in my group, well, in any group, really, they like to use the fancy sleeves, but I have so many card games, and I'm not super rich, so... But I do want to protect my cards. I don't want to have to buy brand new games or wait for replacements. Some uh, vendors don't, aren't, they're not good about replacing stuff. So anyways, I sleeve my cards just in case. And they're not perfect. I've had moisture, I've had liquids go inside the sleeves where I'd have to pull the cards out really fast and swap them. But for the most part, if you're snacking, eating Cheetos, something, you want to have your cards sleeved lest you get uh, orange dust all over your cards. So... Now we'll just start setting them. Let's see, cooking me, general, general. I think the rest are just general. So we're gonna have these set up here. And you can see the artwork is really nice. They're not all that suggestive. Um, well, you'll see, they, they will become much more apparent why um, it's difficult to bring this game out to the table because you may or may not want young people around these cards. I mean, it depends on the maturity level. Um, I'm in my 40s, early 40s, and when I was a kid, we, we were just as immature as any other kid, but we matured, I think most of us anyways, matured pretty quick because um, we weren't so babied by our parents that we were sort of just let loose and run amok and what not. But uh, I think I'm pretty well adjusted. I think the people I grew up with were are pretty well adjusted. Um, so these are the general maids. You can see there's 10. And then you have the private maids. And then you're going to have illnesses. These are... There's a special place where I guess I could look. I mean, they the rest of the cards pretty much go on the bottom. Along the bottom of the area. Oh, Colette, Marianne. We didn't pull them out. Illnesses and bad habits. So, illnesses go here. Bad habits will go here. One, two, three. Oh. Yeah. So, there are two more maids that we did not pull out. And therefore, they're victory points. So, Colette. Wow. So, they <laughs> pretty much, there will be four, like three or four stacks left in the box. So, this is Colette. It's worth one victory point. The more of her you have um, at the end of the game. Oh, if you have the most Colettes at the, if you've chambered her the most times. Sent her to her room the most times, or your room. Um, then uh, you'll get five bonus victory points. And then who's the other one? Marianne. Pause again. Okay, I got Marianne. She's worth six victory points. Like straight up six. All right, and then we have three levels of love. The most common, of course, the largest stack worth one love, one dollar, basically. Then you have slightly better value of two. And then value of three. And there aren't very many of those. It costs seven. Seven love. 
in to output three love. <laughs> and there, see, you have like the behind shot. Um, I think other sets tend to be a little bit less suggestive, but they have the few cards that are more suggestive or really suggestive. So, um, I think the worst one overall is. Probably the first set, maybe. Um, the more risque looking cards are still in the box. Actually, maybe the next set. I forget. I think it's the Romantic Vacation. Oktoberfest, surprisingly, was not super suggestive. Um, no clue. I mean, the the maids had, the barmaids had, uh, were very well endowed, but did not show off a bunch of cleavage, like you'd think. Or, you know, no, no, uh, nipple art or anything like that so anyways that's the setup so the first hand uh, each player will get seven love cards and three Colette cards so you get Colette right away three of them wow really what's well, minus two actions to um, let's pretend this is like a two-player game so I get three Colette um, for one player and three collect for the other player. And then seven love, seven regular love. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven. Really like that. I guess there's enough for four players to have seven of those. And then, anything else? You get five in your hand. To play cards from this hand onto the playing area is to be. S nah. I know they translated this, but man, they, they need to do some editing. So it says here each player now takes. Seven one love cards and three collect cards and then shuffles them thoroughly. This is their deck. They then draw the top five cards and keep them in their hand. To play cards from his hand onto the play area is to be servered by that staff. I think it says serve. Or it's supposed to say serve. Servered. I thought it said severed at first. Oh, ouch. So each each player's card each player is this card pile. Where that player discards cards is also where newly bought cards are placed. To get rid of, to get rid of or fire staff means to return it to the town. Okay. So, well, that's what you start with. So I guess you get one action. Because, one freebie action. Because I don't know, there are no purchase or hire things here. You must get so you can't chamber Colette right away because it requires two actions. So, um, gosh, I don't think I would need to do a, a two player, uh, thing here. We don't, we don't need this. We're just gonna go through a couple rounds. It's already, my video's already at 20 minutes, almost 18 minutes. So, 19 now. So we'll shuffle my hand or my deck. I'm not gonna. Well, I'll play a couple rounds, just one player, which doesn't really work technically, but just for example's sake, we'll do three rounds. How about that? Because then I'll have a number of hands, a number of cards that I can. Well, I'll have shuffled one time. So draw five. One. Oops. Two, three, four, five. And then we'll set the card deck aside. 
So what we're going to do is the order of play is starting phase, start of your turn, certain set aside cards activate their effect here, serving phase, main game, playing made cards, employ phase, play love cards, employ new staff, dismiss phase, dismiss you staff, basically throw your your hand away, whether you played them or not, and then, uh, I mean, you put them in your discard pile, and then you'll draw up five new cards. So, I start out with five dollars. Oh, nope, I gotta call it. So right now she's cluttering my deck. I have four dollars. Four love. You see that? Four. And I had a Colette. Colette. She's worthless right now. So on my hand, or on my turn, I think... Gosh, I wish the text were so much bigger. Um, let's see, four. Let's do... Well, you can see the bold... The bold stuff. So that should tell you, like, what kind of things you want to be able to do. I don't have a lot of cards in my, in my deck right now, so drawing is not too beneficial. But I would like more money and more... Hires. So let's get Saffron first. She's a favorite. Or actually, let's get K Kagari. And I think if any three stacks are depleted, then the game is over. Or, um, when it, here, let me look it up. So. When the when the player has finished all four phases, turn goes to the next player in clockwise order. This continues until the game ends, at which point victory at which point victory points are calculated and the winner is, is decided. So end of the game. Game end and victory. When two made piles in the town have run out, the game ends when the current player has finished their turn. Please note that events and love cards are not made cards. So, these cards, when they're gone, that's fine. Event cards, oh, like bad habit and illness, when those are gone, no big deal. Everything else, when any two stacks are depleted, the game is over. See. And also, this counts. This, these are the private maids. When that's gone, then it's depleted. But all the cards have to be gone, even the ones that are face up, up here. So. Yep, that's it. And the winners crown the king of the mates. So, I picked up Kagari Ichino 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 Mia, and um, she gives two additional actions or servings. So that's all I have. So I'm gonna scoop up my hand played. I'm gonna throw in my discard pile. Turn turn is gonna get. Go to the next person to my left and continue on until it gets back to me. I have five cards left, so these are the ones I've drawn. I have two Colettes and three dollars. So I'll go ahead and purchase a card for, let's see, let's get uh, Saffron now because she gives money. She gives two, two love. And then that's my turn. We'll go another round. We'll shuffle my deck now because I'm out of cards to draw. Oops. One, two, three, four, five. So what do we have now? We have a lot of stuff I don't need. 
So these, well, okay, so in your own play area will have your own separate chambers. You just have to sort of set it aside somewhere. So now turn order counts here. So I'm going to use my free action to earn two additional actions. So this is plus two there. So I have two actions left. See, I had my free action and I used it to play that one for two actions remaining. I have not I don't have enough money to buy, although now I do. Because uh Saffron at the end of the game will give me bonus points if I if I send her to a room. when before she goes to a room though, I can get two love from her. So I have three all together. And I have one purchase or one higher ability. Now I would be able if I had more um if I had some, like another action like dr to draw cards, I could do that or to um to hire hire more. I could do that because I have an an additional action, but I don't. So I'll just use the two love from Saffron plus the one I have in my hand for a total of three and let's three let's get another Saffron now keep in mind I'm playing this all by myself so I have my pick of the pile but imagine if there's four people playing um, the popular cards will go away really really quick and then um you know then we'd be in trouble so one two three four five and so i have two cards left in my uh, deck gameplay goes around comes back to me i have four dollars and a colette one freebie action. So for four dollars, what did I see before? Uh, this one. So Genevieve, she gives one additional serving, allows you to draw a, a card, and gives you a little love all at once. So you can combo that really easy, but we won't have access to her until um, she's been shuffled through once. Um, so she costs four, that's all my money, all my love. Throw in the discard pile, draw two cards, and then shuffle what, what's in my discard pile back into my main deck. Um, play will resume to the player on the left and continue on until it gets back to me again. And I'll shuffle the cards. I think two more rounds should be a good example of the gameplay. I'm almost at 30 minutes. So, I drew two. I have three left to draw. One, two, three. All right. So, I have that one. So I have three dollars. Now the money can go right, right down on the board. Can be played, I think, because there's no consequence there. But now these, well, there's nothing here either. So for my free action, so what, what's going to happen here is I'm going to use an action to play this one. It's going to be give me an additional action. So I still have one action remaining. Um. But as I play this card, I will earn one love, and I'll get to draw a card to my hand. So I have this one, Kigari Ichinomiya. So I have an additional action, and I have uh, one extra dollar. So I have four dollars all together. Um, and if I play Saffron Virginie, I'll have another two dollars. So that's six dollars all together, and then I'll play Kagari Ichinomiya. 
I think he, I get a higher. You get you get. Uh, yeah, well, you get your action, and then you get a higher. So, um, but I have two additional actions because of this card. Give me two additional actions, but I really don't have anything else to do. I have six love to spend to hire somebody. I could get another Colette, but I have not sent any to their chambers. I can hire a one of these private maids. Cost five. Um, during these, these are the ones where the phases resolve at the start of your turn. Um, during your starting phase, you may look at one random card in another player's hand. After, you may allow that player to look at one random card from your hand. If you do, exchange those two cards. So that can be pretty powerful. I'm playing by myself, so we won't worry about that. Uh, I still have $6, but I can only hire one person. Um... Because I only have my my uh, one per turn, I don't have an extra. So I can only, yeah, I can only hire one for total six. Let's do uh, this one. Six. Actually, let's do this one. So what I get here is three love. And uh, an additional hire here. And then what she does is she shares the love to Nala's Trent. So when you play this card, you'll get three love and an, and an additional hire. And every other player draws a card. So she shares the love. We'll never get there. I'm going to play out the rest of my deck. Which is one more turn. And... Uh, I think that that makes a good uh, example play. Two, three, four, five. And there are three cards left in my deck. What have we got? Four and Colette. So four dollars. Well, you get the picture. So gameplay continues until two stacks are depleted. Um, and then... Like I said, these, these collect cards, they don't score unless you send her to her room. And, um, I think that's just it. The private maids, they're, when they're out, they score even though they're not chambered, I think. So, I mean, that that's why they cost a little more. And they're ongoing um, actions. Or benefits. So, uh, I'm tired. It, what is it, like midnight already? Almost midnight. So, there you have it, Tanto Corey.